Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to an Alzheimer's Society of Calgary Facebook talk. Uh, I'm Paul Bartell, the Manager of Learning and Support Services, and I'm joined today by Roger Marple. Uh, Roger lives in Medicine Hat, used to work for Alberta Health Services, father of three with one grandson, avid golfer, tennis player, uh, and traveler. And Roger's also on the board of directors for the Alberta Society of, uh, or sorry, the Alzheimer Society of Alberta and the Northwest Territories. Um, uh, and Roger has also been living with young onset uh, Alzheimer's disease. How are you doing, Roger? Oh, I couldn't be better. Thank you. Good. So, Roger, you're, you're obviously busy and doing a lot of things, but I wanted to ask, um, you know, somebody who's led an, uh, such an active life, how did that, how did getting that diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease uh, affect you? Uh, well, at the time, um, you know, not so good. Uh, you, you know, when your mortality is being challenged, uh, that's a tough nut to crack, you know. Um, um, I, I do remember at the time, after a diagnosis being uh, in a very dark place. Um, you know, when I Google, um, say, Alzheimer's, a lot of the discussions were more towards the end of life. Um, and, and I thought of my life towards that. You know, I, I kept seeing end of days and uh, I, I couldn't see the obvious that you can live well with this disease for some time to come. And I think back on my diagnosis, and I'm very process driven. And what I mean is when I worked for Alberta Health Services, part of my job was to uh, flesh out a process and it's called process mapping. Uh, you've probably heard of it. And, and look at processes, how things work. And I think back on my, my diagnosis, my, my doctor did everything he should do. You know, he talked about possible medications that could help uh, a vitamin regime he wanted me on. He shared on how this disease progresses. Uh, and he was very transparent and honest, in which I appreciated it. But something he didn't do are two things. Um, one, I often think if we're going to treat this as a process of diagnosis, so what's the process, right? So there's a couple things that I'd love to see in place uh, when doctors give a diagnosis. And one is just planting a little seed of hope. Because okay. when you're diagnosed, you, you, you get into this treadmill in your mind um, trying to process this. And if you can't see a happy ending in your mind, uh, it could be quite a struggle. So if you just plant a seed of, you know, hey, a lot of people live well with this disease for some time to come, and we'll look into ways to live well, now you're planting a seed of hope, right? And, it, and, and a simple comment like that can totally change the trajectory on how you're going to uh, approach this disease. So, so a, a, a one minute conversation from a doctor can totally change how, how we would look at this because when we come up for air, we start thinking about that seed the doctor planted, right? right. So I, I really would love to encourage uh, doctors to do that, right? So, where uh, did, so I'm, I'm curious then, where did you, you know, if that didn't happen at the diagnosis, where did you find that? that seed of hope or where did you, where did you find that, um, that process that led you to going, Hey, I can live well with this for. Well, it was actually a, a, a video, uh, by a guy named Jim Mann. Um, he's a rock star in my eyes. Uh, he's very outspoken advocate. Uh, he doesn't have a problem with stigma. He speaks openly, uh, that kind of thing, but the, the video was about uh, him in his life, and he shared challenges that he had living with dementia, but he had some solutions in tow as well, and, and uh, it was a dementia-friendly community video, but what I got out of it, what excited me about it was, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this guy and saying, wow, you know, he has dementia, he's living well, look at this guy go, and it was an epiphany for me. 
you know, I said, holy cow, why didn't I see this? Why am I so caught up in the end of days here, right? You know, right. so he totally changed sure. my thinking. And, and, and that was my seed of hope I needed to see, right? Yet, hey, I get it. I got challenges and it's a rough disease, but by God, you can live well. Uh, right. And I have been. And the other thing about process for um, a diagnosis, there's a national program in place, coast to coast, endorsed by our health authorities, and it's called First Link. Yep. And I really wish he gave me a referral uh, uh, via First Link to approach my Alzheimer's Society because something you guys do really well. Um, and our Alzheimer's societies across Canada is, is uh, helping see this disease in the order it should be seen. In other words, there's a beginning, a moderate end of days, but let's back up the conversation a bit here uh, and yeah. let's, let's help you live well with this disease, right? And, and you do that very well. And I, I would love to see more consistent referral, but personally, and if they could get that seed of hope yeah, and do that darn referral more consistently, um, I could see this being a lot smoother for future people uh, with a diagnosis. And, and I think those two steps are critical. Thanks, Thanks for that, Roger. Um, so you mentioned, you know, it's, it's a little rough and there's things you have to do to adjust. Could you talk about some of the adjustments you've had to make? Because I also know, you know, after your diagnosis, you kept working for a few years. Yeah. You live on your own. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to know what adjustments you've, you've made that have enabled you to keep, uh, keep doing those things. Uh, that's kind of a cool question. Uh, um, okay. One thing about living with, okay. Well, I'll back up a bit. One thing about living with dementia uh, that I found in my world that things um, uh, I can say consistently change as time goes on, challenges become more pronounced, that kind of thing. And I have a philosophy about all this is that uh, in my life, what I do is if I find a challenge and it's getting in my way for living well to do what I want to do, I try to figure out a workaround. So identify the challenge, figure out a workaround that works for you, and continue living life, right? So that's my whole philosophy. Uh, there was a really great article that Alberta Health Services did with me uh, towards working uh, with dementia, and I was able to work for a couple of years after my diagnosis. And, you know, we... Uh, I had a really cool understanding boss and uh, we worked together uh, to keep me working. And uh, that was a wonderful experience in itself. And I also use a lot of memory techniques. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I really dove into that. Like I live alone. Right. Uh, other than my roommate, Bernie, the wonder cat, uh, he's my <laughs> roommate, but uh, uh so my Achilles heel is, is memory. So I really focus on that. I use Google Home uh, okay. as a source for memory, or I use a visual technique that I use. If you put certain things well-placed and you see it, it triggers the memory, right? right? So if I'm doing laundry, I'll grab my laundry hamper and I'll put it right in my living room and, uh, if I left the laundry hamper in my bedroom, I'd sorry, I forget to do the laundry, but now it's sitting in the middle of my living room. So even if I'm procrastinating, uh, I'm able, you know, you got that constant uh, remember trigger, you know, so there's a lot of memory techniques that I use. Right. Um, I also uh, did a very short um, memory document, memory tips and tricks. Uh, document with Alzheimer's Canada, um, you know, that kind of thing, sharing that information, we got to share uh, ways to live well, you know, yeah. for people with dementia, because often they don't know what that looks like, you know, or, or I, at, the, at the end of the day, I encourage people, if you have a challenge, find a workaround 
and continue living life. You know, cherry pick what works for you. Well, and I think that's a really important point is, you know, what, what is working for one person isn't always going to work for the next person. But the, the key thing to remember is there are workarounds. There are things that can be done to help, uh, help people live well with dementia. And it's a matter of continuing to try and find those. Yeah. And some of the, the coolest tips and tricks I know is, was shared by our Alzheimer's society, right? Right. But they got some good tricks themselves. You know, there was, uh, my medications, I have a medication blister pack and they taught me to have a calendar uh, beside the medication. And all I do is put AM and PM on it as I take the medication. And, you know, if I, I think an hour later, hey, did I take my medication? I simply look at the calendar and I see AM written. I said, yeah, yeah, I took it. You know, so there's a simple technique that you people shared with me you know so there's lots of tips and tricks i encourage people to explore them great and i know you know you're staying really busy now um you're on the board of of asant uh and you're uh doing a lot of speaking engagements uh what else are you what else are you doing to keep living life to the fullest uh Geez, I'm, I'm doing a lot. You know, it's uh, almost hard to keep up. And, and that's pretty cool in itself. Uh, right. But I, I write monthly blogs. I, uh, uh, like I said, I've done a number of speaking engagements, that kind of thing. But that's what, you know, they, that, that's another example for living well. And, and like, if I sit down and write a speech, well, it beats the hell out of a crossword puzzle for brain exercises, you know, uh, that kind of thing. Very true. Mind challenged, you know, so I always recommend that they set the bar higher if possible. Yeah. Uh, challenge your mind, but uh, that, that alone is a, t a way of living well. But um, yeah, I'm on the board of directors. We're doing some uh, with the Alberta with the Alzheimer's Society of Alberta and Northwest Territories. So we're doing a lot of uh, uh, work uh, in Alberta and uh, it's very inspirational for me. I'm on an uh, advisory committee with Alzheimer's Canada. Um, um, with, uh, it's people with dementia who advise. Uh, yeah. Yep. different things, different directions they're going, that kind of thing. So I find that very uh, wonderful to be involved with. I'm involved with uh, AgeWell. Um, yep. For those of you who don't know what that is, uh, I recommend Googling them. They're doing incredible work in Canada. Um, I'm on an advisory committee with them. I'm on an advisory committee, a research uh, policy committee with Alzheimer's Canada. Like I have my mitts are full. Uh, yeah. And I'm also in, uh, assisting with uh, uh, some really cool uh, research um, studies being done uh, as well, uh, mainly towards quality of life research, you know? So yeah, my life is quite full. Great. My dad's card is full. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Um, and, and, you know, maybe we kind of already touched on this, but I guess, you know, one of the things we talk a lot about is uh, the stigma that people with dementia face um, out there. And so I'm, I, what would you want, what do you want people to know about people with dementia in general? When it comes to you know the yeah. attitudes, the attitudes a lot of people still have about Alzheimer's disease and and the related conditions. Well, you know, I could go on uh, sharing stories of what stigma looks like, but I, I you know, I, I don't. I'm I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I'd like to shift my conversation to um, making stigma go away. Yeah, uh, more and more what we, you know, like uh, we know, okay, stigma number one has very real per percussion or what's the word? Repercussions. Thank you. Repercussions. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, um, a big, it's a big word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
But anyway, it has very big repercussions, and I, I want people to understand that. For every action, there's a reaction. Right. So, so um, and I want people to know that there's very real, real repercussions from it. It's, 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 I, I want people, you know, they say people are driven underground. Mm -hmm. They're very isolated. I've heard stories from my local Alzheimer's Society where someone with dementia wanted to go into the office to learn more about it. And the family said, no, don't. We don't want anyone to know that you have. We don't want the public to know you have dementia. So there's a lot of shame associated with it. So that alone is a repercussion of stigma. Yeah. Right. And uh, there's some things I've learned. Um, stigma is a taught behavior from one generation to the next, number one. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you an example. Um, I always use the joke telling culture um, towards Alzheimer's specifically because people recognize that form of dementia. And when you look on Facebook, uh, I remember being inundated with, with Alzheimer's jokes. Yeah. So here's the thing. After a while, I started challenging it in a very polite, respectful way. Um, but I would challenge it. In other words, I'd say, you know, hey, that joke's not cool. And, yeah. and this is an incurable disease. And you don't see jokes about ALS or cancer up there, right? And often when I point this out, people almost every time would say, I never thought of that. So that, you know, when you think about it, here we have a behavior, a face of stigma, but I realize that people don't realize that it's not appropriate. Yeah. Right? They don't know that they're perpetuating stigma. And I found out through time, often this is the case. So it's not like they're bad people. They're just not getting it. Right. Yeah. So I, I bring up uh, Alzheimer's jokes often as an example of stigma because uh, we don't need studies to tell us this isn't cool. Yeah. And I honest to God believe it's a culture we could change right here, right now, if, if more Canadians were to respectfully um, challenge the joke when they see it. And I'm starting to see it like, I'm starting on my Facebook feed. I can count on one hand in the last year how many Alzheimer's jokes I've seen because I've started challenging it. And then other people get it and they start challenging. Do you, do you see what I mean? And, and, and that to me was remarkable in itself. So, what if we were all challenging those jokes and those jokes? Could you, we could wipe that out. Yeah. In no time flat. Like, I honest to God believe that. So so that's a very doable thing in the here and now. We just got to get more people doing it. Yes. Right? You know, boom, we've made a culture change in Canada. And, and by doing that, one thing, getting that across the finish line, now it's going to lead to more understanding for other uh, faces of stigma, right? It's It's going to cultivate a more empathetic understanding society. Right. Great. Well, so thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Here's an example of making stigma go away. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. I, I got to say that I think past challenging those, those stereotypes and those jokes, I think uh, people like yourself who are out there doing things and uh, staying very active and speaking up, um, as people living with this, I think is also a really important part of challenging that stigma. Um, yeah. Because, you know, that perception is that people with Alzheimer's disease or other dementias aren't capable anymore. And you clearly are, um, you know, capable of so much. So that on its own helps, I think, challenge the stigma. Well, I'm hoping we all will challenge the stigma. Um, so I wanted to just, again, thanks so much for joining me uh, for some time today to, to have this conversation. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, let's stay in touch. And I, keep, I, I hope to keep hearing from you.
well, it, it was my pleasure, Paul, and uh, um, the pleasure was all mine. All right. Great. Thanks so much, Roger. Uh, so uh, join us again in a couple of weeks when we'll be doing another one of these uh, or another talk here on Facebook for the Alzheimer's Society of Calgary. Uh, if you have any questions on what we talked about today or um, other topics that you think we should be addressing, please let us know. You can uh, get in touch with us at 403-290-0110 uh, or email us at findsupport at alzheimercalgary.ca. Thanks again, Roger. My pleasure.